Good morning. Uh, happy fourth Sunday uh, of Advent. If you guys could stand and join us in singing our entrance hymn. Come Emmanuel. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess unto you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord, you, Bethlehem, Ephrath Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God, and they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth, he shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Turn to 
from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings, you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. So we've reached our final week here, fourth uh, Sunday of Advent, and in just a few days we will be celebrating God becoming man and being born into this world for us. Now, throughout these weeks of Advent, we've tried to uh, kind of start at looking at the mystery, uh, at first with the, this big overview, kind of the 30,000 foot overview, right? And really what we're doing is, is we're examining uh, during this time why God did what he did and in the way in which he did it, right? So starting uh, at the very heights and looking over, looking and seeing uh, the destruction that had come to the human race of sin, of death, right? Death of the soul and of understanding, coming to the understanding that we in and of ourselves uh, simply uh, could not and do not, right? Desire that the kingdom of God would be lived here and now right, over and above all things. And so God decides that he's going to come and do it himself for us, right, to help us out. And so as we started to come uh, to uh, a little bit closer and looking a little bit closer at the mystery, uh, coming to see the ways in which we're called to trust, how over and above everything else, no matter uh, how, how important we think something else is, and maybe in reality it is quite important, right? Things like our family right, things like jobs and health and all this stuff, it doesn't put a candle nor can it save us compared to uh, what God is about to enact, right? And so this week as we draw a little bit closer to the mystery and we're really now, we're really starting to zone in on what is the cause of our salvation, right? Again, just as we have the past few weeks, and as I've heard it said all the time, right, if I don't know the answer uh, to a question about uh, the Catholic faith, I can always just simply say, Jesus, well, yes, okay, I'm not denying that. But let's understand the mystery, right? And so the mystery this week is understanding how is God going to make this come about? What specifically is the thing that Jesus is going to do to make this come about. And we can point to all sorts of things, right? We understand in our faith, we say, well, he's going to institute the Eucharist or the sacraments, right? Or he's going to suffer and die on the cross. All of those things are true and they are a part of the mystery. But if we want to look at what is the cause, the cause of the mystery, because that's what Christ is trying to call us into. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings, you took no delight. Okay? So we're seeing a movement from the, what has been given to the Jews, right, as a means of justification. Remember, the sacrifices were a means of justification. <clears throat> whereby they could come back into right relationship with God by offering to God everything that was most important to their lives and saying, I offer this to you, God, because I acknowledge that you are indeed the most important thing in my life. That's why there are the sacrifices. It helps us to detach from the things that we put importance in. But God says, that's not enough. Right? Before, I just wanted you to follow rules, to try to get you to a place where I can give you what it is I truly want to give you. And what I truly want to give you is my son and his example. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, behold, 
I come to do your will, O God. His will. What is the cause of everything that Christ ever did? What is the reason that he healed all the people that he did? Why is it the reason that he raised people from the dead? Why did he cast out demons? Why did he go to his passion? Why did he suffer a crucifixion? Why did he found a church? And through that church, uh, extend to us all of the graces that are available to us in the sacraments. Why did he do all of those things? Because it's the will of the Father. That's why. It's not purely for us. Now, we are beneficiaries, certainly. Right? But to never put ourselves as the first reason why Christ came. Are we important? Yes. Are your lives important? Yes. Does God love you very much? Yes. That's true. But Jesus Christ came to do first his Father's will. That's the cause. That's why all these things happened. Now, as we'll hear in the Gospel of John, I have come to do your will, O Father, for the salvation of souls. Okay? So, we are the beneficiaries of everything that he's done. But remember, first for the Father always. Now, what does this tell us? Remember, everything that Christ did, he did as a model for us. As we look, and in this past week during uh, daily Mass, uh, we see the, uh, in the Gospel of Matthew the genealogy of Jesus. And we're seeing over and over and over again, and even today in our Gospel, as Mary is pregnant with Jesus, the Gospel writers are continually pointing to the humanity of God in Jesus Christ. Why does he do that? Well, I have Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man. I also have the knowledge and understanding in this mystery that he came to do the Father's will for our, the salvation of our souls. What does that mean? That means that everything that he did is not out of reach for us. He suffered every temptation that you or I have ever suffered. Every one of them. Think of all of the temptations you've gone through in your life. I'm not talking about the sins, I'm talking about the temptations, and some of those lead to sin and to death. But Christ didn't fall into any of those temptations. He's fully human, though. So not only does he come to show us, right, what it means to do the Father's will, but he's also coming to show us, hey, in your humanity, you can do this if you desire it above all things. Is it going to happen tomorrow? No, probably not. But that's why we hold up the example of somebody like John the Baptist or of the saints. When you look at a Teresa of Avila and talking and speaking, or John of the Cross speaking of the glories of true union with him, it can be done. It can be done. And eventually it will be done. Because remember, once we're brought into heaven, right, God willing, we follow his will, we're doing all of the things to prove, right, our love for him, and we're brought into heaven, you're still a human being, <laughs> right? We might lose our bodies for a while, we're going to get them back. It's going to be a glorified body. So at some point in our lives, if we believe that we're going to heaven, We'll still be human, right? And so why should it be any more true for those people in heaven than it is for us? Right? And so the key is actually desiring to do the will of God. Because that's where we see the fullness of God. My friends, the will, okay? The will has more to do with just simply choosing to uh, obey. It points to something even greater. To desire to do the will of God to desire for the will of God to be done in this life, no matter uh, how painful it appears to us now, to do what Christ did. Remember, anything of the will has a direct connection to love. 
So in Jesus doing the will of God, he is revealing the very nature of God, which is love. That's why people were so moved by him. When they're saying that he's teaching with such great authority, or is there, you know, in just standing in awe and marveling at the way in which he lived his life, he lived a true life of love. And it didn't matter what it took. And he didn't care what the repercussions of that love were, which we know what they were. Right? The greatest sign of God's love, or of love in general, that there ever is, is not a pink heart. It is Christ on the cross. Plain and simple. That's what he came to do, was to reveal to us God's will, to reveal to us who God is, which is love. Simply the desiring the very best for the other person, for their own good, and not because I receive anything out of it. That's the message that Christ wanted to bring to us. That's how he's going to convert the world. That's how he's going to save the world. And so what do we take from that? Simply what we take from that is the one prayer every single day that we should be praying, okay? And rarely do I say you should be, because everybody's different, right? We're all a little bit different. We all live a little bit different lives. But the one thing that all of us always continually, if we're professing our love for Jesus Christ and we're saying that I, I desire to come to know him uh, more fully, God, show me your will. Help me to do it. And I accept whatever is your will this day and every day. That will bring you freedom, I promise. That will bring you peace, I promise. It will also bring you suffering. It will also bring you some pain. But that's the gospel. That's the gospel. Over and above everything else. Is Jesus Christ teaching us to do the will of the Father for the salvation of our souls, that we might not have death, but life eternally. Now rising, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Like the Virgin Mary, we pray now, trusting that the Lord's promises to us will be fulfilled. That the Church of Jesus Christ may always be joyful in proclaiming his coming. We pray to the Lord.
Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, the shepherd of all nations, will guide world leaders and their peoples in the ways of peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as Mary helped Elizabeth, so we may help those who are pregnant care for their unborn children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and dying may not be neglected by those around them, but loved and strengthened. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers through the prayer line and the prayer basket, and for those who have died and for those who grieve them, that they may find comfort in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God Almighty Father, in your great love and mercy, we ask that you would hear and answer our prayers in accord with your most holy will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. 
and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God, and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, <clears throat> your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace to us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever near, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of announcements. I think I lied, more than a couple. So we are still in need of some ministries for our Christmas masses. So um, specifically, if you're a lector, Eucharistic minister, or if you help with hospitality, usher, uh, to please stop by the table in the gathering space. Um, and then also the parish out office and outreach program will be closed Friday the 24th and all day on Monday the 27th in observance of, of Christmas. On the 23rd, after the 9 a.m. Mass, uh, we're going to be decorating the church for Christmas. So uh, if you would like to come and help us, uh, that would be great. And then as Christmas falls on Saturday this year, just a reminder, okay? Uh, Christmas is never moved for any reason, right? And so same thing, obviously, we don't move Sunday Masses ever, okay? So there's the obligation to attend a, a Christmas Mass and a Sunday Mass, okay? So there's no, there is no Saturday evening Mass, okay? Saturday is Christmas, so between the evening of Friday, Saturday morning, Right? There's a Mass, and then Sunday we have our three Masses still here. Um, and so those are our options, just as a, a reminder for everybody. Okay? If you have any questions about that, always feel free uh, to come and ask. Okay? Thank you so much. In all of our continued prayers, I pray that this time, especially here leading up to Christmas, is very fruitful for you. Please spend some time uh, resting with Mary in Nazareth right now, as she's, well, Bethlehem probably, right? Uh, as they're traveling. Her and Joseph are traveling uh, to spend some time and, and to focus on that mystery of what it means that God comes as a little child. He could have come in any way, shape, or form. He's done it all throughout history. He chose to come as a child. What does that mean? Meditate on that. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.